My name is Machine Cawley. So today we're going to take a look at radar charts, or also known as polar charts, or Kvyat charts. Um, these charts are quite powerful in that they allow us to, uh, within the one graph, uh, view multiple measurements or multiple dimensions of a particular uh, scenario, phenomenon, um, entity that we're trying to measure. Uh, typically we have a range of values from 0 to 100 and uh, that gives us the ability then I guess to plot along our different axes, uh, axes um, the score from uh, let's say a poor value of 0 to a optimal value of 100 so within that range and because we got multiple values then we get we get a a, a holistic picture of uh, whatever it is we're measuring. So if we look at this in particular, let's say we have a company um, and we want to measure some of the company's uh, performance characteristics, whatever that we decide they, they, they are going to be. Um, so we would, we would have these categories or these performance measurements and uh, we can plot each one of those on the graph on the various different axes. So if we we'll take a look at this one, for example, we see that Company 1 has scored very high in terms of Category 3, so quite close to 90% or so, whereas in Category 4, it's it's pretty poor, so we're in around 10, uh, between 10 and 20%. So what it does is gives us that, that snap snapshot perspective of uh, multiple uh, values for, for a particular company. Now, <coughs> this becomes much more powerful then again if we can superimpose let's say another company so if we take company 2 here the red line we superimpose its values on top then what we quickly have is a comparison um, across multiple dimensions for multiple companies so you can imagine that this is quite useful for the cases where you want to compare companies perhaps you are trying to choose some some outsource provider some partners so this might be helpful in your vendor selection process. So quite quite easily we see here that um, company one is is way ahead in terms of uh, measurements for category three, whereas company two is excelling in category four. So straight away we see the strengths and the weaknesses of the various different companies. So we don't just have to have a zero to one hundred um, uh, value range we can in fact use this graph to to map any set of values that we have so if we take this one for example it's a uh, it's a graph showing the advertising spend uh, over a number of years so five years in this case now instead of multiple companies here we have we have multiple advertising mediums for a single company so again we identify these with the various different colors and we can see then over the years how our spread of spend has decreased or increased across the different mediums. So if we take if we take the internet as an example, so in year one it's quite low, year two a little bit of growth, year three starting to grow, and then by year five we see that that the that the advertising spend has has uh, outgrown all the other mediums. So that perspective there uh, we get we get uh, the the view of a a number of different. Um, advertising outlets and again in one, one holistic picture so the next thing to do now is to uh, is to see how do we generate this uh, this type of graph in Excel okay to all that <coughs> we're going to convert uh, into that chart that that we just saw so we position our, our data in a table format like this so for each of our uh, categories or uh, what we refer to as performance measurements in terms of company, we list them down here, and and then our our, our measurement axes we list across across the top. So they're going to be our our five different categories. So first thing we do is we're going to highlight this area. So this has got all the data that we want to include in our chart, and quite simply we we simply go up to our uh, insert section. Uh, as part of our menu options here, we go into our charts ribbon section. 
we don't see our radar chart here, our polar chart, so we get into other charts. And if we look down at the bottom here, we have what we call the, the radar charts down here. So we just select that, straightforward. So, hey presto, we got we got a almost complete uh, radar chart already. So we can see that uh, there's a couple of things that we, we just want to add to this. One of them is that we want to perhaps just make uh, these headings here uh, bold. So we just select one and we can go back into home and choose the bold option just to format those a little bit. The same with the legend, we just click on that uh, box there and we hit the bold selection. So one other thing now we want to do is we want to insert a a heading. So what we can do in this case is we can go into our chart tools up here and we have design, layout and format. So if we go into layout um, and we look in here we have an option called chart title. So if we just select that it gives us a couple of different options. So I just want to to have it above the chart. So I'm just going to select that. And then we go in here and we just we type in whatever it is we want as our title. So advertising spend. So so that's that's pretty much um, as easy as it gets. One of the things you might want to do is we see that these lines here are a little bit thicker than these ones. So we do that by simply selecting that data series, that line. We do a mouse, a mouse right click and we do a format data series. So this is uh, quite similar to any of the graphs we use in, in Excel. And here we can go into line style under width then we're going to increase that up to let's say three points and we hit close. And then we can go in and of course we, we, we reset that for um, or redo that for, for the different ones. So that just gives us a better a better visual and we can do that for the rest of the lines. So that's your uh, Polar radar chart developed in Excel and of course if, if any of these change they're automatically linked and we see we see our diagram changing uh, dynamically which is exactly what we want. Okay so um, we'll do a, we'll do a, an additional video um, after this one which is going to do a, a Kvyat diagram which is similar to this except the Kvyat uh, specifies uh, outer and inner limits uh, which then give us a better view in terms of um, assessing uh, whether or not we're within limits whether our, our, our variance is in our acceptable bands etc so we'll do a, another short video just on that one thank you very much